I'm Evangelist Tony Abram, and it's a joy. And episode 20 today is titled Joy. Nehemiah 8 and 10 says, Neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Do you know that God wants you to be strong? Now, talking about joy today, and for the next couple minutes, I want to tell an example that can bring joy into your life. The greatest joy that you'll ever have is when you are born again. You, what do I mean? When you open your heart and receive Jesus Christ. That is the greatest joy that a person can ever have. Sometimes it's immediate, but sometimes it's a little bit later when you realize what has happened and that joy of God's salvation comes into your spirit, there is no greater joy. But Nehemiah the prophet said that the joy of the Lord is your strength. And if you want to continue to be strong, strong in the Lord, and I believe even physically, it is that second joy that can come. The joy that it may not be like the first one, not quite as great, but I believe it's the second greatest joy that can come into your life. And you know what it is? It's soul winning. Now, in my ministry of 60 years, it has been my privilege to lead thousands and thousands to that saving knowledge of Jesus Christ in countries all over the world because God is no respecter of persons. And Jesus said, him that comes to me, I shall no wise cast out. And he doesn't turn anyone away. He's no respecter of, a per, uh, of people. He loves everybody the same. And he loves you. Now, soul winning, whether it's one person or a, a, a thousand people at the time, the joy is so wonderful. And... Today, I want to talk about personal soul winning. And I'd like to give an example of myself. When I was around 20 some years age, studying already now for the ministry, 21, I was working at, in a steel mill in uh, Butler, Pennsylvania, Arm, uh, Armco, Armco Steel. And uh, amongst them, hundreds of workers there, uh, I, there, I didn't meet many prof professing Christians that shared their, their, their testimony. There was one in our crew whose name was Art. Now, my job was weighing up the measurements for the uh, melting of uh, <clears throat> the steel, the heats, they called them. And uh, I had different jobs there, but uh, I had a real responsible job. Uh, I guess I was always good in mathematics. And that's why they wanted me for weighing these on the scales. All these uh, uh, vehicles that came in, not trucks, but I'm trying to think what they're called, heisters and forklifts. And I used to have to weigh that, those up. But my boss, uh, sectional boss, he, he was a good Catholic man, I believe. And Red, we called him. And he was an older man. I think he was waiting for his retirement. And uh, he called me because uh, he asked what I was trying to do. And we got to, he started calling me father. And it wasn't a month's time that all over the factory, uh, hundreds of people would greet me. Hello, father, father Abraham. <laughs> My title. But uh, some of the immediate men that worked around us and when we'd have lunch and we'd get into the, uh, into the shack, we called it, and we were eating our lunch, and, and, we, and it gave me opportunity because I didn't force myself so much on, but if you live for Jesus, if you let your light shine, if you don't, you, prof, you, you, you are not joining in with all the dirty jokes and all the cursing and so forth, pretty soon, even then, they start asking questions, but of course, I would speak every opportunity I got. 
But there was one young man in the crew, and he told my boss, he said, I don't want to work with father. And yet, when we'd be eating, he'd be asking questions. He'd be criticizing, making fun out of me. And, uh, but then he'd say with the bo to my boss, Red, I don't want to work with Father Abraham. And uh, so uh, anyways, the questions would soon come around and I would share Jesus. And I remember Jim who gave us a, a hard, uh, gave me a hard time. He, he knew I didn't smoke and uh, he'd always be offering me a cigarette. And I said, no, I, I don't smoke. And of course, I've had people over the years say to me, uh, Tony, uh, if, does smoking send someone to hell? <laughs> and uh, I'd say, well, I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, I says, but do you know that it makes you smell like you came from there? And that would be the way I would answer that question. But I believe that the Lord wants us to take care of the temple. And I think that's why it's wrong. Anything can be wrong. Overeating can be wrong. Uh, uh, so many things we can harm our bodies with. So we need to take care of our temple. But that's another subject. And, but anyways, I remember this one day, uh, Jim came, was sitting there, and he was opening up a new pack of cigarettes. Here, he said, Father, have one. I said, Jim, can I really have one? He said, uh, yeah, yeah, yes, he was surprised. And uh, I I. I took the one cigarette uh, out, and I says, uh, Jim, uh, can I have more? Well, take all you want. Are you sure? Yes. And I know Red, my boss, was watching. Yeah, go ahead, Father Abraham, take some. And I just, I kept taking, I think I took 19 of the 20 cigarettes. And, and Jim, he's looking. He's, and then I got up, and I put it on the ground, and I stepped on it. He got angry, so angry. I said, but you gave it to me. And my boss said, you gave them to him. And he never offered me another cigarette. And he didn't want to work with me. But let me jump ahead real quick because I don't want to prolong this. But this has to deal with personal soul winning, letting your light shine, sharing Jesus. And I, I, I don't know, maybe six months, so maybe a year went by. And I, I wasn't working there. And I was in ministry already. <clears throat> and... Uh, I was walking down the streets there in Butler, Pennsylvania. And here come a shout from behind me, Father, Father Abraham. And I turned and here come Jim. He, he was only about two or three years young, older than me. And here he comes right, and I thought, oh Lord, uh, I don't, I really don't want to face this. I figured I'm going to get a real razzing or he's going to, and he came running up and he didn't stop. He threw his arms around me, hugged me, and shouted, praise God, Father. And I said, I said, Jim. And I, I saw he was serious. And he looked at me and he said, do you know, I mocked you. I made fun out of you. And I said, I didn't want to work with you. And yet I would ask those questions. And I got news to tell you. He said, because of your life, and your testimony three months ago. Oh no, he said six months ago. So it must've been about a year after I left work. He said, six months ago, I wandered into a Baptist church and there I surrendered my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. He is now my personal savior. And I didn't, I just wanted a shot to victory. And, and I can tell you, friends, such a joy, such a joy came into my spirit, into my heart. I, it just was a renewal. <clears throat> I knew that soul winning brought joy. But whether you're an evangelist, whether you're a pastor, or whatever God has called you to be, if you're a believer, that's all it takes because Jesus said to the church in Mark 16 and 15, he says, and he said it to believers, not just to the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, he said to the church, go you into all the world and preach the gospel to every person. 
And that includes you and I. You say you can do it. Oh, yes, you can. The Spirit of God can do it. He is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we could ever ask or believe. And what does the scripture say in, that, in the continuance of that verse? According to the power that works in us. And what power is working in us? The Holy Spirit. If you're saved, if you've received Jesus, you, you have the Spirit of God. And if you haven't, today is your day. This is the moment. Today is the day. Now is the time. Now is the hour. I used to like what Billy Graham, uh, the program was the hour of decision. This could be yours if you're not outside the ark of safety. Why don't you open your heart and life and give your life to Jesus and then go tell others because it's for you, it's for your house, it's for your whole family. And if you want joy, if you're looking for strength, let me tell you, it's not in any of this three S tonic or Geritol or whatever they have on the market nowadays. It is the it is the Lord Jesus Christ. It is the Spirit of God in you. And what joy. Even, oh yes, you say, what if I tell people about the Lord, what he did for me? Well, you testify. You share. And one plants, another water, but God brings the increase. But when they do surrender, all oh, the joy. And it is, what does the Bible say? <clears throat> about you know, you can go to heaven with a sick body, uh, but you can't go without a, with a sick spirit. And what makes the angels rejoice? Is it when prayer is made and sick people are healed, blind eyes open, cripples walk? Does that break? No. The Bible says the angels rejoice when one person repents. So if it brings great joy in heaven, don't you think God doesn't share that to you when you lead someone to Jesus? Father, as I close this session today, such joy. I thank you, Lord, for Brother Jim many years ago. I don't know if he's still living here on earth, but I know he's living somewhere and that be in the presence of God. And Lord, I pray for all believers that they too might experience the joy by letting their light shine, by sharing their testimony, and you saving someone they had witnessed to, Lord, oh, and give them that joy, that joy that no man can take away, the joy that gives strength. And friends, until the next time, would you just pray for that one nearest to you? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you and your house would be saved. Now remember, Brother Abram loves you, but God...